What's going on, everybody? So today I want to talk about Tower Fantasy and kind of what's going on in the community in terms of analytics and kind of just addressing the game from kind of a data standpoint. I was going to do all this research on my own, but... I found on Reddit, someone basically already pulled up Google Trends. They pulled up the revenue da uh, data from the mobile devices. They also have a lot more graphs. And so I'm just going to use this post. You know, why uh, Why do work some that someone has already done? I'll leave this Reddit post in the description down below if you guys want to check this out because it's really well done. But I want to talk about a few things here and then talk about another post that I've seen some people critiquing the game about. Because to be fair, there's a lot of people in the game kind of burnt out of the game, right? Uh, it, it's been... It launched, uh, oh, I can't even remember when it launched at this point. Um, was it August? I can't even remember. <laughs> uh, but it's been a while since we, we've had the game out and we've been playing it for a while. And that has been obviously a downside to a lot of people because you got the whole new Vera update and it feels like it's the same content, just a little bit different. And that's, you know, unfortunate for a lot of people. But regardless, I want to talk about the analytics here uh, and address a few things. So right here, we have all the mobile uh, phone, basically revenue data. It doesn't include, as far as I know, the official PC Tower Fantasy client and the Steam revenue, which is uh, more recent. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that joined Steam for the first time and started spending because of Vera. So uh, you can expect this to be a little bit more. But totaling this all up, it looks like this equals about $9.1 million dollars in the month of October, which is good. Don't get me wrong. If you compare that to some other recent like gotcha games um, that have come out, you know, if I just compare it to like, maybe you've some, some of you have seen this, but like Infinite Magic Raid uh, or things like that, it's significantly higher, like over 10 times the amount. But if you compare it to its own genre, um, the MMO kind of mobile MMO genre, you have Diablo Immortal in that sphere. Uh, you're gonna have a few other games in that sphere. Uh, or you can even compare it to like Genshin Impact. And these numbers are just not there. They're just not up there compared to some of those other games. I think it competes with Diablo Immortal for sure, but not Genshin. Um, and so a lot of people view this as a bad thing. This is a bad trend. And if I just continue onwards here, um, some more revenue data. Again, I'll leave this post in the description down below, but I want to, I don't want to go super in depth into all of the, uh, you know, downloads and the data over the revenue and everything. I think the overall picture gives a good idea, but I do want to talk about this graph right here. This is a Google trends graph um, and it's got Tower Fantasy in blue, World of Warcraft in red and Lost Ark in yellow. Uh, this is the search terms. This is probably a better idea because this actually calculates the games of World of Warcraft and Lost Ark and then Tower Fantasy doesn't have a game category on Google trends, but Regardless, you can see uh, the trend has always been going downward. And if you go more in depth into this, what has ended up happening is the Google Trends basically accrued an additional 50 to 80% player base from Vera from what it was before Vera, um, right? Vera, let's just say you had about 50,000 players playing. Well, now you have about 75 to 100,000 players. 100,000 players playing the game when Vera launched. So it did amp up a lot of people. However, that being said, it, it didn't really do as much as I thought it would. And the start was so massively, massively high uh, that I'm surprised at how far it's fallen. And then we have the Steam, uh, you know, all time peak. You have some players playing right now, the 24 hour peak on Steam. And uh, you can see the kind of topping of the charts. It's actually got pretty positive reviews overall after the initial kind of wave of negative reviews. You know, you got the um, really, really hardcore people that are just hate spamming everything and you got a bunch of negative reviews there, but you have a lot of more positive reviews as well since the game has been out for a couple of days now and a couple of weeks. And then there's some more talk and conversation about this, but, this is a huge decline overall. Um, again, comparing it to other games that have basically been out for a little while, let's just say Diablo Immortal is a good example because that is another MMO RPG that I would consider is a gotcha game as well. And this game is kind of on par with that game, but both games expected to do way better. Um, Diablo Immortal is a massive fail in that 
I, in that idea, right? Diablo Mortal was meant to be this really, really massive game with a huge IP behind it, and it just absolutely fell in the trash to what it could have been. Tower Fantasy has a similar route uh, in that it could have been much bigger, and it should have been much bigger based on how hyped it was getting, but it didn't, and it's kind of fallen off hard recently. Um, and I think there's a few reasons why. Burnout is one um, for sure. And that's just a natural part of the game. But this other Reddit post here uh, that I was reading through, and I will leave both of these in the description down below. Um, this kind of gave me some talking points for a Tower of Fantasy discussion because I absolutely 100% agree with a lot of these points. And honestly, these are some of the points that I've made exactly the same in Diablo Immortal. For those of you that watch Diablo Immortal content, I've made the exact same points in my videos on my main channel for the game compared uh, to this game. The first one is the game is casual friendly, but not solo friendly. The biggest offender is joint operations, especially for newer players as time passes by. This is something that I've been pushing for in Diablo Immortal for months and months and months. The game needs some sort of solo content that makes it easier for people to just play the game solo. And people will always say, oh, it's an MMO. Why are you not grouping up with people? Guys, if you want your game to be healthier and you want more people to play the game, then you need to focus on a lot of these different things because a lot of your population are casual, non people that don't group up and casual players. That's just what it is. And so making it some sort of solo friendly content is a good thing. And some people will say, oh, well, and it'll, it'll incentivize people to not form groups. Well, guess what? You guys who make that argument also say, just join a crew. If you wanna join a group, join a crew. That's kind of what it work, how it works. If you wanna play solo, go play solo. Just give people options to do whatever they want in the game. I think it's a bad thing normally to force people in a certain style in an MMO RPG. You kind of want to go ahead and give as many people as many options as possible for as many people to be attracted to your game. And I completely agree with this. Um, and, and this is kind of like the dungeon mode in Diablo Immortal, right? Just make joint operations scale to how many players are in there. If you have three players, you get three player kind of scaling. If you have one player, you get one player kind of scaling. And I feel like this is a huge thing because a lot of people complain about, oh, I don't want to carry someone else. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Go play a solo joint operation and boom, you can now do it without having to deal with all those players. I feel like it kind of fixes two birds, one stone. And I really, really like this. The second thing is lack of story. Um, I, I don't necessarily agree with this, to be honest. Um, I, I think that the lack of story is a very, very niche portion of the community. So I don't think this is a very major point. I agree that it does kind of have a lack of story, um, but I don't think that it's widely popular. And the third thing is that they mentioned is the lack of team building variety. And this is something that I actually 100% agree with as well. This is kind of the same note as, you know, the solo content in that you just want to give people as many options to play the game as how they want. And when you're free to play in this game, you kind of have to save for specific team comps and banners, right? If you're, especially if you're like me, which by the time this video comes out, you guys must have seen that I pulled for Ruby and I missed four coin flips on every single banner, which makes it so that I have to focus super hard on one banner um, to make sure that I'm able to play the game with that team comp. Um, and you could say, oh, just play whatever you want. That's fine. You can play whatever you want. It's not nearly going to be as good and you will struggle in a lot of content. And on top of that, you will get flamed for it, right? So the problem is twofold. You can say, just play whatever you want. And I would agree with that sentiment, but the community doesn't actually honor that. The community actually attacks people that do that, right? Because if you're not pumping out the best damage as possible, you don't get invited to groups. You get kicked from groups or people just leave because they don't want to deal with you at all, right? So that's already a problem. So you kind of have to build meta or at least a specific elemental team comp. And in order to build an elemental team comp, you have to go ahead and go for the banners. And in order to get the banners, you need a bunch of summons. And so you can't actually focus on a team comp super hard because you can't get the high star rated characters. And then on top of that, you don't have a lot of weapons out there that really can mix and match your team comp. You kind of need that shatter. Uh, you need your main DPS. You need the elemental resonance, right? If you want to be meta, but you can't do some sort of random comp that you actually want to do. And, and I think that that's a big, big downside to people not enjoying the game. And this, I think, also finishes or fixes somewhat of the fourth problem that I brought, I will bring up because 
Two of these, I would say that are kind of on my radar, but another one that this person didn't mention is burnout in the game. And I think a lot of people are feeling that because it's the same thing over and over again, right? Your home instance, kill monsters. Your Vera, kill monsters. Your artificial island, kill monsters. And it's the same thing. They're like punching bags. They all just get harder and more health, more health, more health. Every part of the content game is it's just killing monsters. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Uh, some games are just like that, but I feel like a lot of people are getting burnt out of that type of content. The one way you can kind of mix it up is by swapping your teams. That's kind of what happened to me. I actually really enjoyed Vera and the later parts of Artificial Island because I summoned for Cobalt, right? And I just used Cobalt and I really enjoyed it. And now I swap back to Samir. So I'm like, oh, I kind of got old. All right, well, Cobalt kind of got boring. I'm gonna swap back to Samir and use Samir now. And it's just been more fun being able to swap team comps. The very little of gameplay I got out of Sokka Fu on some of those side missions, I actually really enjoyed. And I'm considering summoning for her, even though I don't have Meryl. Um, and I would just go with an ice comp, whatever I got, because I think it'd be fun. And I definitely want to consider doing that. But then again, I feel like I don't want to do that because Lynn's coming right after. And I feel like I have to summon for both of them. So... It's hard to make a decision, um, and I feel like uh, the lack of, of building variety is kind of rough. I'm not saying that they should have everyone get every kind of banner or whatever, but at least give us some more options, right? Or at least put in a standard banner. I feel like that's, that's the best way to handle this, right? Make it so that those limited banners that you did, give us those, but on standard banners. Put out Nemesis right now. That would be a great kind of fix in that every player can now farm for those characters, Instead of making it, you know, two, three, four month span until we actually get those characters on standard banner, you know, give a sense of exclusivity for sure. You know, give a month, two months maybe where whales are exclusively or have exclusive access to these characters. That's fine. But in order for people to actually really kind of mix it up and for free to play players to really get in there or just players in general, if they happen to miss a banner early on, you kind of need to put them in standard banner. So let me know what you guys think in the description down below or in the comment section down below. I'm very curious. I do think that overall Tower of Fantasy is a solid game. It's got some really good mechanics. There's a few issues that I have with it for sure. I don't like Hoda in general in terms of how they've handled a lot of situations. Um, and on top of that, they've had a lot of bugs and a lot of uh, issues, which most of them uh, I'll give them a pass on because, you know, games have bugs. They have issues. I'm just judging them on the response. But overall, uh, I guess the direction of the game seems to be catch up to Chinese server. And I don't necessarily think that that's a necessarily healthy thing for the game. And they may need to mix things up. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Uh, I know that a lot of you feel completely the opposite and it's the best game ever. And I know a lot of you feel the other way, which is this is the worst game ever. I quit, um, but I'm curious to see what you all think. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like the video, sub to the channel, and I will see you guys tomorrow.